Big Value Big Business Podcast, Episode 16. Welcome to the Big Value Big Business Podcast with James Lynch where we talk with today's most successful marketing minds about getting the right message in front of the right people and getting the right people to become your customers for life. And now, your host, James Lake. All right. Welcome back, my friends, to yet another edition of the Big Value Big Business Podcast. I am your host, James Lynch. I am really big, big, big time super excited about my very special guest today. His name is Mr. John Lee Dumas. John comes to us from entrepreneuronfire.com, where he is the host of the top ranked seven day a week business podcast by the same name, Entrepreneur on Fire. On his podcast, with over 500 episodes published, John interviews today's most successful and inspiring entrepreneurs. And he really shines the spotlight down on their entrepreneurial journey, highlighting their successes, their failures, and their lessons learned along the way. Through masterfully crafted questioning, John is able to extract the most amazing gold nuggets from some of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world, exposing many of the key components that have led to their ultimate success. It is both an honor and a pleasure to speak today with the leader of Fire Nation from entrepreneuronfire.com. Let's say hello to Mr. John Lee Dumas. Hello, John. James, I am prepared to ignite. (laughs) I would expect nothing less, my friend. (laughs) You are on fire. Love it. I am psyched. I can't believe I'm talking to you. Um, I express that I'm fairly new in this space. And for you to give me the time, uh, I know you're always giving back to the community. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Even on a Saturday, you're here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> cool. And I also want to pay a little homage. Um, you, sir, have been a huge inspiration for me to start the Big Value Big Business dot com podcast. You have proven to me and so many other folks out there that we can effectively communicate our message to the world through the power of the podcast. And I want to say thank you for everything you have done for all of us in the online marketing space, sir. Well, James, I'm honored because when I launched Entrepreneur on Fire, it was because I was inspired by others. And now the fact that I'm inspiring others like yourself who are going to have an amazing ripple effect in this world as well just makes me so happy. Awesome. 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 Thank you very much. So I'm really excited just to get down to business here and and talk with you about you know, how have you, you've grown your platform, you know, to serve so many people in so many ways and in such a short amount of time, you know, how, it's just, uh, how many podcast downloads are you up to right now? 4.8 million. Oh my goodness. In a year, <laughs> year and a half, uh, September, 2012. Months. Yeah. Yep. Wow. That's 4.8 million. Wow. So I, I'm hoping you, you share with us, you know, how you provide, uh, so much, what I'm about, big value in your business and and with each and every piece of content that you produce. So does that sound like a plan, sir? Sounds like a plan. And I have to be honest, as you asked that question, I realized the last time I checked was about 15 days ago. I'm actually at 5.2 million. Wait a minute. That many uh, carry the one. So you got that (laughs) many in just that few. Well, maybe it was a month ago. Maybe it was a month. Incredible. Incredible. Congratulations. I'm generating currently about 500,000 unique downloads every month. Wow. Wow. And the sponsors love that. Um, yeah. And I love that my sponsors love that. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, man. All right. Awesome. So um, can we start? Let's start at the beginning. It's probably a good place to start. Get a little history about John Lee Doom is basically, you know, where this wild ride began and a little bit about the journey that brought you here to where you are today. Boom. Let's do it. So, James, I, I went to college on a ROTC scholarship, which means that the Army paid for my four years at Providence College, but it wasn't totally free because I did owe eight years as an officer post my collegiate experience. So, in 2002, I graduated, was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Army. And for those of you history buffs, um, 2002 in May, we were actually the first class to be commissioned post 9-11. So we knew it was going to be serious stuff. So the next four years of my life consisted of a lot of training, 
13-month tour of duty in Iraq as a platoon leader of 16 men in four tanks in Fallujah, Al-Ramadi, and Habaniya, Iraq. So pretty intense experience for a 23, 24-year-old. Um, but then at 26, I got out of the military. My active duty requirement was over and I entered the reserves. But that allowed me to try a bunch of different civilian opportunities. So I went to law school, dropped out after a semester because I hated it. Went to corporate finance um, at, in Boston for John Hancock. Worked there for a couple of years. Financially, very successful and it made me you know, very fulfilled, but emotionally and just didn't have the passion for it. So I knew I had to leave. It just wasn't for me long term. It was a good short term gig, but it just wasn't for me career wise. So then I got into real estate, tried commercial and residential and actually had a lot of fun there because it's a very entrepreneurial game, especially during the biggest crash um, in potentially the US history of real estate. And that was a really exciting time and scary time. And I learned a lot as an entrepreneur. Um, but you know, it was during one of those times at 32 years old that I was driving to work, stuck in a traffic jam, running out of my favorite podcast, freaking out, saying, I can deal being in a car in traffic as long as I have my podcast. But if I don't and I have to hear Miley Cyrus one more time, <laughs> I really am gonna just turn off this road and you know, and just go to sleep because this is just too painful. So I had the epiphany moment at that time. Why isn't there a seven day a week business podcast? The aha moment hit me. I decided that I was gonna take action, be that person to create it. Entrepreneur on Fire was born that day. Now, obviously, James, an incredible amount of hard work and effort went from that idea moment to the actual launching of Entrepreneur on Fire about four months later. But, you know, I'm not afraid of hard work. I'm not afraid of investing in myself. So I put my head down. I put my nose to the grindstone. And just like you, I made it happen and I published a podcast. That That is fantastic. And what, what a Phoenix Rising story. I, I had those <laughs> questions. I mean, you answered several of the questions I was going to ask it's Ooh, yeah. like at one point in time did you you know you got the idea that you really wanted to provide value through content and obviously that was the podcast and why a podcast John why um were you thinking before uh, obviously you, you know you're on your commute you're going to your real estate job you you know I'm uh, uh, sorry you were in uh, with John Hancock at that time and just going to this job and why um were you looking for an online business to get into what was going through your head at that time the only thing that was going through my head, James, was to find something that I was passionate about, that I could pour my heart, my soul, my energy, my enthusiasm into because I just saw with every profession I had up to that point in my life, I was holding myself back from fully committing because it wasn't something I really enjoyed. And how can you throw yourself completely into something with total abandon that you aren't completely passionate about? So that was my big search in life. I was out there looking for a passion. I was trying to find that passion and it wasn't finding me, James. So I kept trying different things and then boom, out of left field, you know, my passion hit me across the face, you know, in the form of that aha moment, that light bulb that went off. And I just said, wow, entrepreneur on fire. Like people get <laughs> what it means to be on fire in sports, you know, in the real, you know, in the civilian world and finance, wherever that may be. People get when I say, James, you are on fire. Like, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, right? baby. To bring <laughs> entrepreneurs that were on fire and sharing their journey with listeners that would want to be hearing that inspiration and learning from it. And it all, it hit me all at once. I knew that an idea is just an idea, you know, an idea is worth nothing, but I took such strong action from that point to bring it and make it a reality to launch the first seven day a week podcast that interviews inspiring and successful entrepreneurs. And, you know, here we are 500 plus episodes later, here we sit in early 2014. You know, in 2013, Entrepreneur Fire won Best of iTunes 2013. And it was just been a crazy ride. You know, now the business generates over six figures a month. And, you know, when I first started, James, that was the first question I got from friends, from family, from anybody who I told what I was doing. How are you going to monetize? And it was a great question because I didn't have the answer. I didn't know. I knew that I just wanted to deliver high valuable content, James, high quality lessons and stories and information for free. And I knew that that components would grow an audience. And I know that I knew that that audience in turn would give me ways to monetize. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so tell me why, uh, against all advice, why seven days? Why seven days a week, 24, uh, 365? Tell me about it. And that. it was against all advice. And not just like that kind of bystander advice that you should never listen to anyways, but it was against all advice from the top hot shots in the industry. Cliff Ravenscraft, Jamie Tardy, you know, my mentor and my mastermind leader both said, John, you shouldn't do a seven day a week podcast. Nobody's going to want to listen to that many podcasts. You're going to get burnt out. You're not going to be able to find enough guests for your show. All of these things were being told to me, you know, by people who had very successful podcasts who had been there and done that. And I want to make the very strong point, James, that both my mentor, Jamie, and, you know, my good friend and mastermind leader, Cliff Ravenscraft, gave me unbelievable advice that I've applied to my business that have helped it out so much. But on that advice, I put my blinders on and I said, you know what? I'm not just going to be another once a week podcast. I'm not going to swim in that red ocean. I want the blue ocean. I want to go where nobody's gone before. Let's get a little Star Trek music going mm -hmm, on here right? because I want to go where nobody has ventured before. I want to release that podcast. I know personally that me, John Lee Dumas, would listen to a seven-day-a-week podcast because I commute to work five hours a day. I, I mean, five days a week. I go to the gym four to five times a week. And all of those times, I want to be listening to podcasts. So why would I not want to listen to one great podcast that comes out seven days a week that has a great flow, a great format, and great guests? It was a no-brainer to me, James. I knew there were other people out there in the world that would want that as well. I just had to find them. And iTunes gives you an amazing platform to find them, James. So I just put my podcast out there on this amazing platform. And now Entrepreneur on Fire, beyond being downloaded over 500,000 times on a monthly basis and growing, is downloaded in over 145 countries oh. around the world. Oh my, that's incredible, 145 countries, wow. How does that make you feel, John, looking back 18, 18 months? It makes me feel very satisfied. It makes me feel very inspired because of the inspiration that's brought others, the ripple effect. It makes me feel uh, very proud of the amount of hard work that I've done because you know, I'm not one of those Tim Ferrisses that have that are that's ever gonna write a book that's called four hour work week. I mean, if I wrote a book, it would be seventy four hour work week <laughs> because I have an app called Rescue Time and it tracks how much time I work and I know because of that app that I'm putting in 70 plus hours every single week because it's a lot of gosh darn hard work to create the amount of content that I create. Obviously, um, financially, I'm being rewarded for that now. I was not for the first six months, for the first eight months. It was a lot of red. It was a lot of doing you know, things for free, wondering if this ever was gonna grow into something. But I kept the faith, I kept working hard, and 13 month, months after launch, we had our first six-figure month. That, that, that's incredible. That's incredible. You know, let's just take, taking a step back, you, you talked to us about um, what gave you the idea, what gave you the inspiration. I, I often ask aspiring entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, as you effectively re, um, affectionately refer to them, you know, some, of, some guys don't think they're good enough or where they actually are, but they don't think they're good enough to teach others. They don't think they really have something to offer, they, let alone to get paid for it. Um, you've explained how you crossed that threshold what would you give advice to folks that are listening now, especially the entrepreneurs or people that are struggling, that are, that are new, just getting out of the blocks? What, what kind of advice would you give them about the self-doubt, about the, uh, uh, to quote um, uh, Stephen Pressfield, the resistance that they're hearing and feeling? I would say, listener, I love you. Like, I resonate with you. Like, I've been there. I've had the doubt. I've had to face the resistance. And I really want to point to one of my favorite entrepreneurs, Seth Godin, who talks so eloquently about the imposter syndrome. And the imposter syndrome is something that we all have, James. You have it. I have it. President Obama has it. We wake up every single morning and we say, why? Like, why is anybody going to want to listen to my podcast? Why is anybody going to want to be interviewed on my show? Who's going to get anything out of something that I could possibly produce? It's this innate situation that all of us are born with. It's 
uh, survival instinct on some areas, you know, don't get out of the herd, you know, come back with us, you know, be safe, you know, be like everybody else, blend in, you know, don't stand out so that saber toothed tiger comes and attacks you. Like it's innate, it's a survivalist instinct, you know, that imposter syndrome of sticking out of being different, it scares us and it scares everybody. And so what I would say to the listener is, embrace it. Realize it's going to be there. That fear is going to be there. There's nothing to do about it. So just embrace the fear. Know that it's part of the journey and know that the small percentage of people that can rise above that fear are the ones that are going to have abnormal success. Perfect. 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 Thank you so much for that. Now, listen, I, I mean, it, it's obvious and your listeners know, uh, my listeners are really finding out the positive, upbeat dude you are. You know, let's get out of my <laughs> way. Dude, it can't have been without any challenges. Tell me one of your biggest ones within the last, uh, I don't know, 18 months, um, maybe during uh, when you were putting things together. Tell me about one of, just one of the biggest challenges that you were able to face and, and overcome. I face some massive challenges on a weekly basis. And we talk about all of those, James, very openly on our monthly income reports, eofire.com, because just like we want everybody to be able to emulate the successes that we're having in the entrepreneurial online podcasting world. And that's why we post all of our successes. We also post all of our failures and mistakes because those are numerous as well. And we want you to avoid those mistakes and not waste time, energy, and effort on them either. So, you know, that's really powerful and people can get a lot of information at eofire.com slash income. But the one that I really want to focus on today it's something that I think will ring true for a lot of people that are just starting out. It's what I refer to as my $100,000 fear of failure loss, basically. So what happened, James, is that my podcast was scheduled to launch August 15th of 2012. I had been working hard all summer. I had 40 interviews lined up. I was ready to go. Then I woke up August 15th terrified. The imposter syndrome beat me. And I made up a bunch of BS and I convinced myself, I convinced my my mentor, I convinced my masterminds that I was not ready to launch. And I convinced them and I convinced myself too. And so I pushed it back just 15 days to September 1st. Well, the same thing happened on September 1st. So I pushed it back just 15 days to September 15th. Well, the same thing happened again. I pushed it back just 15 days to October 1st. Luckily, by this time, my mentor caught on and was like, John, Today is September 22nd. If you don't launch your podcast today, I will fire you. Wow. And that kind of shook me into reality because I knew that my mentor was so important to my success at that point for a lot of reasons. So I launched a podcast, even though I was terrified to do it. And James, the reason why I was terrified to launch my podcast is because until I launched my podcast, I could never fail because until it actually went live, nobody could say that it wouldn't work. Nobody could tell me, ha ha, I told you so. A seven day a week podcast will never work. Ha ha, I told you so. Nobody wants to listen to a seven day a week podcast. Nobody could say that until I actually published it and it failed. So I knew as long as I waited to publish, there was always that possibility that people couldn't come out and say, I told you so, because they didn't quite know yet. They didn't have evidence to back it up. So I let that fear take over. And I call it a $100,000 mistake, James, because our first six-figure month was in October of 2013. The only thing that my month of delaying did was push everything back that I'd done by one month. So my first six-figure month would have been in September of 2013. Therefore, that delay cost me $100,000. And what happened just one month, actually, it was just two months after I launched. So I launched in September, October, November. In mid-November, I was contacted by New Media Expo to speak at a conference January 2nd in Las Vegas. And if I had waited much longer to launch, I would never have had time to get contacted to speak at that conference, which took my podcast and my entire credibility to a whole new level. It allowed me to get Seth Godin, Tim Ferriss, Gary Vaynerchuk on my podcast in rapid succession. So my near failure to launch was had almost devastating um, realities, and it did cost me $100,000. Mm, and almost your your reputation to the point where it, it is now just that yes. you if you had missed that uh, new media expo um wow wow that, that's incredible you touched on the same the imposter syndrome that's uh president obama all all of all the way down to me that we all suffer <laughs> from and that was totally had you 
had you in, it, in its grasp. Totally. Unbelievable, unbelievable. So um, you kind of indicated three months, six months. Um, where was the point when you knew you were on your way? I mean, there was no turning back. You're on the right path. To quote like uh, uh, Malcolm Gladwell. What was your tipping point or point in time? My tipping point was a six-month point, and we actually do have a great article on this at eofire.com slash income, which is called The First 365 Days. And as anybody is going through and reading that, you will see that you know the first nine months, you know the three months prior to launch and the six months post-launch um, were a lot of red, um, a lot of negative money. You know, I was investing heavily in myself. Luckily, I had the savings account to do so, but it was a lot of money going out and not any money coming in. But then I did reach the tipping point at month six post-launch. So in, in April of 2013, which is six months after I launched, I started to be approached by sponsors. And they said, John, we see that you have a large audience. We see that you're ranked high in iTunes. We want to be in front of your audience. This is Audible. This is LegalZoom. This is Squarespace. This is 99designs. And I said, well, let's talk numbers. Um, I wasn't just going to bring sponsors on for you know just dollars because I knew it was going to dilute the podcast on some level, as all sponsorships do. I mean, no matter how hard you try, and I try really hard to only have really targeted sponsors that would help entrepreneur on fire listeners that will really benefit Fire Nation. It is a distraction. You know, it it takes people away from your brand. It it takes people away from the main focus of the interview. So I had my number, and that number I had to be generating was $500 per episode. And since I was only going to bring on two sponsors per episode, I knew that each sponsor had to be willing to pay me $250 before I started taking sponsors on. We ran the numbers. My downloads commanded that dollar amount. So I started taking sponsors on in April of 2013 for really the first time on a consistent basis. And that was my first five-figure month. Mm, incredible. Incredible. That That's... Wow. Um, tell, tell me about present day. I just wanted to focus in on uh, the inside the head of John Lee Dumas just for a second. Um, to Not to sound too chic, uh, cliche, but you're differentiating, which you do have a differentiating value proposition. How do you approach your day, your delivery, uh, and, and bringing that value? What's inside your head? What's your mantra? So my mantra here at Entrepreneur on Fire really does go back to a quote that I love from Albert Einstein, which is, try not to become a man of success, but try instead to become a man of value. And from day one, I've really wanted to just be delivering value and look at value first for Fire Nation. So in everything that we do here at Entrepreneur on Fire, myself, our content creator, Kate Erickson, who's my girlfriend and partner here, you know, our two virtual assistants in the Philippines that works 40 hours a week for us each and really work incredibly hard. We're all together of the same mindset of trying to deliver value to Fire Nation. That's our mantra. That's our focus day in and day out. And it's, continue, it's continued to steed us well. And you continue to over-deliver on a very, very consistent <laughs> basis, you. my friend. Absolutely. Anyone that's ever heard you can attest to that. And uh, just a note for our listeners, and I promise to do this more often, there will be copious show notes with copious links. Uh, everything that, that we've spoke of, all the links that John and the articles that John has mentioned. Um, I love that Einstein quote. Um, he has another one. I don't have it in front of me. The other one is, if you can't explain simply what you do, then you don't know enough about it. Uh, something like that. I love I love some of Einstein's <laughs> quotes. But thank you so much for bringing the value, the word value, the value uh, equation into my uh, Big Value, Big Business podcast because that's what we're all about here. Just well, James, where can, the listeners, where can the listeners find the show notes page? Uh, they're going to find it at bigvaluebigbusiness.com forward slash episode 16. That's episode 16. Boom. Or they can go to the search box and search John Lee. And as you like to say, you'll be hanging out there, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to be, uh, yeah, carbon copy, but I had a good teacher. Anyway, hey, um, 
Einstein uh, won inspiration. Where does John get his inspiration on a day-to-day basis? Do you? Uh, I, 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 we already heard a little bit about uh, masterminds and mentors. Um, tell us the importance of, of that and where you're kind of looking for your inspiration and motivation these days. I get inspiration every single day, James, from Fire Nation. I hundreds of emails come in on a day-to-day basis. You know, I have a great team here that does a really good job of filtering out the ones that just aren't really relevant to me um, and really giving me the ones that are. And a lot of the emails that come in every single day are from people that are sharing stories of how they were inspired to do something that they never thought they'd have the courage to do, success stories, you know. And, of course, the um, the occasional constructive criticism comes in, which I insist that my um, VAs pass on through to me because it's valuable to take constructive criticism for just what it is. And I take that criticism and try to apply it to my business, to my podcast to improve as well. So I really am inspired every day to improve Entrepreneur on Fire's overall experience. I love getting inspired by people you know, that are just emailing in so often with their experiences and their breakthrough and their aha moments they love to share with me. And I use a great tool called Vocaroo, which allows me to quickly respond to them via an audio message, which is so personal. Because even when I do respond um, via an, an email reply, a lot of times they assume that one of my VAs is pot- potentially doing it. They don't know for sure. So I just want to. I just want them to. You know, I want the fact that if I am if I am taking the time to actually respond, I want them to know for sure that it, it really is me. And this tool, Vocaroo, really gives me an amazing opportunity to do so very effectively and efficiently. So I love that tool. I use it every single day. And of course, you know, my membership mastermind, Fire Nation Elite, is built up of what I consider 100 of the top entrepreneurs that are out there that are just doing great things. And these aren't like the top entrepreneurs like Pat Flynn and Amy Porterfield. These are just people that listen to Entrepreneur on Fire that consider themselves part of Fire Nation that want to now be part of Fire Nation Elite, which again is this membership mastermind that we've, you know, we've capped and closed at 100 members. And every day I'm in that Facebook group, I'm engaging with them. Um, like 45 of them are flying out next week to be here in San Diego for our annual meetup. It's going to be an amazing time. Mm, mm, that that's a perfect segue into. Um I wanted to ask you what you're working on now. Uh, Podcasters Paradise, Fire Nation Elite, The Fire Path. I, I subscribe to The Fire Path. I, I love it. Um, tell us what's happening. So one thing I've learned with Podcasters Paradise is the power of live webinars. This is an unbelievable opportunity to grow your email list, build your brand, sell your product or service, create your product or service, and then sell it on a webinar. I mean, it's an unbelievable opportunity that everybody needs to be taking advantage of no matter what industry you're in, period. So because of that, and because Kate and I and the Entrepreneur on Fire team have literally perfected the uh, live webinar system, we are going to be releasing in just a couple of weeks here, Webinar on Fire, which is going to be an amazing product to show people how to create, present, and convert your webinar. And it's just, I can't even say enough how amazing doing live webinars are. Again, to grow your email list, to sell your product or service live, 86% of the $440,000 we've done in sales for Podcasters Paradise have come on a live webinar. People need the event. They need the assurance. They want the engagement. You have to give it to them as an entrepreneur. And it's so easy to do and we show you how. So Webinar on Fire is something we're really excited about right now. I can't believe another product, and it's going to fit right in. I, I totally heard the success. I think I heard you talking to uh, Ramit uh, on a podcast, and you were you were going over because he's a marketing monster, and he couldn't believe monster. your numbers. He was so impressed with those, as everyone <laughs> should be. But, um, yeah, um, wow. So why not uh, create a product? Ooh, yeah. Show everyone else how to do it. Awesome. Uh, the Fire Path, uh, you've already talked about uh, Fire Nation Elite. Now, that's a closed um, application type of um, yep. uh, mastermind group. It is. So we capped it at 100 members, James, because 
we found that 100 is a perfect number. It's large enough where we can really powerfully impact our own businesses, but it's small enough so we can really develop intimate relationships with each other. You know, I'd say the numbers kind of usually hover between 95 to 85 members. And then whenever it gets down to like 85, I open applications back up to bring in like another 10 or 15 people. We never go above 100, but I do open applications back up to bring people in to kind of give that extra shot of energy of new people coming in. So if anybody is ever interested, it's always close. Closed, but you can always sign up at firenationelite.com for a future 15 minute chat with me. And that will, um, uh, you know, we'll sit down 15 minutes. We'll talk about Fire Nation Elite. And if there happens to be an opening and we both think that you're the right fit for it, then um, we'll open the doors. Great. So it's, it's basically a waiting list. I was going to ask you how. Yes. So you they kind of it's register for a waiting list. And when you see the door cracking open, you start uh, interviewing. Exactly. Awesome. Awesome. All right. As we wind down, um, tell us where we can find John Lee Dumas. EOfire.com is where all the magic happens. And it does happen. (laughs) Big magic. Big value. Big magic. Speaking of magic, my Fire Nation Elite hangout next week, I've hired a magician. (laughs) Nice. I'm pretty um, excited about that. Maybe you can just uh, clip that particular part out and make it available to uh, some of us non-members. <laughs> At least the magician part. Yeah. John Lee Dumas, thank you so much for your time today. You are a gentleman and an inspiration to us all. We we look forward to each and every episode of EO Fire to come. And you know, I hope you and I can talk again in the very, very near future, sir. James, I will catch you on the flip side. You definitely will, my friend. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. I hope you enjoyed our chat today with John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur on Fire. He was awesome. You can find the show notes and the highlights of this interview at BigValueBigBusiness.com forward slash episode 16. Or just go to BigValueBigBusiness.com and type John Lee into the search box for easy access. Hey, while you're on the site, please take a second to leave a comment either about this interview or about the podcast overall. Or, if you prefer, click on through to iTunes and subscribe to the show. Heck, if you feel like it, go ahead and leave a review on iTunes for us. I would really and truly appreciate an honest review, and it helps me get the show in front of more people. So if you could, click through any of the links on the site and head on over to iTunes and subscribe. Lastly, I really hope we brought some big value into your day. You take care, and I'll be talking to you real soon. Thanks for listening to the Big Value Big Business Podcast at www.bigvaluebigbusiness.com.